Out of all the updated builds that I've covered or am still working on currently, this detonating arrow build has improved the most. It's faster, deals more damage, has increased survivability, and there's more explosions. If you're unaware, explosions mean more fun. As the thumbnail states, I've removed detonating arrow from the bar, or loadout, and we're proccing that through explosive trap and the blast rain node. This leads to far more burst damage, as you can deploy more traps that release detonating arrows than you could actually fire off in that same time frame. It also allows you to be more mobile, since you stop to shoot less often, which increases your survivability. There's also something very interesting interesting about this build. It's reached over 1,000 stacks of bleed at a single time, and frequently hits about 500 plus in about one second. So, although the version you're seeing doesn't emphasize or boost this dot damage as a priority, you might be able to come up with your own version that does, if I don't beat you to it. Or of course, still using detonating arrow as one of our specialization skills, and the main reason for this is the arcing blast, this can cause lightning tendrils to chain out to nearby targets. These tendrils actually have the ability to proc the Icicle on bow hit from Rain and Winter. Icicle is an ability that will scale from Cold, Spell, Attunement, and Dexterity. We'll certainly have the ability to scale Cold damage through our gear, Dexterity will be scaled through our gear and our passive trees. However, when it comes to spell damage, we'll want to make sure that we're running Morning Frost. Morning Frost is going to give us an additional Cold damage to attacks and spells per point of Dexterity, which we're scaling as mentioned. That actually makes gearing slightly easier for this character. If you look at the tooltip here, it's got roughly 15.7 thousand damage. And one of these rings that I have equipped is actually got spell damage on it. Now, if we unequip this ring and exchange it for something with elemental damage, you'll notice that the tooltip actually drops slightly. So you have a lot of options when it comes to gearing this character. Now we've opened with a pair of unique items. However, I want to be clear that you don't need these to actually play the build. You can start using this build from level one. As many people have commented on the original video, they have great success playing this from the beginning of the game. All right, so we're scaling ice cold damage that has the ability to proc off of lightning tendrils from detonating arrow, but we still don't have detonating arrow directly on our bar. To solve this, we run explosive trap. And more specifically, we run the blast rain node. This allows us to shoot arrows that are attached with explosive traps. And our traps are gonna have traps. Traps. By utilizing the arrow trap node, we now get detonating arrow to proc through these explosive traps, and there's a number of additional traps that we get through a lot of the talent points in this particular specialization tree. I do want to mention that automated bombardment is not taken. I was unable to sustain the mana cost of the additional traps through this node. It's definitely a worthwhile talent if you're able to sustain the mana, otherwise leave it off or you'll just be oom all the time. All of these abilities, the explosive traps, the detonating arrows, the icicles, all proc on hit effects, which means when you have an item like Troka's Teeth, a 68% chance to bleed, combined with an 18% chance to bleed, you see hundreds of stacks on the target. The reason I went with Puncture is because of the Bloodthirst and Bleeding Fury buff. This can give you additional chance to bleed and it can stack a number of times. You can keep these stacks up by using Puncture as your generator and then using Explosive Trap as your spender. Thanks to sapping strikes in the passive tree, we'll get health and mana whenever we use puncture, and on top of that, puncture has its own method of returning mana as well. So in the intro, I mentioned that you might potentially be able to use some of these stacks, and I'm just going to hover over some items in case they give you any ideas if you're interested in playing that variation. Using items like this that increase the bleed duration, give you physical penetration, just physical skills in general, was one of the directions I went. I also considered converting these bleed stacks to ignite. In fact, I also think that poison might be viable as well, but I don't have that set up as fine-tuned. Using a bunch of ignite on hit, you can scale these stacks incredibly high as well. You want to see it live. So let's go ahead and fire off some shots using the explosive trap. That'll put us a little over 700, regen a little bit of mana, fire off some more, and we'll exceed the cap of 999. The fire or ignite version gets close as well. However, I can't quite reach the cap because I don't have the ability of extending the duration in the same way that we can the physical bleeds. I've been looking at Tongue of the Aberrant Seer for the poison version. This has a 35% chance to poison on spell hit. Now, keep in mind that Icicle counts as a spell, and we're getting a ton of these Icicles as procs, so this would be the way I would try to look to make a poison version. As we jump to some gameplay, I want to mention that this build is very controller friendly, so if you prefer to play on that, then by all means, it's a really good choice in terms of builds. This is Generator Spender, so you're going to watch your mana pool while you're playing and killing all the enemies. What you're going to do is generate your mana to a certain point, Fire off an explosive trap, which then procs the detonating arrow. Then if you need to, you'll generate some more mana through puncture and just repeat the process. Shift does generate a little bit of mana as well. However, it's not anything substantial. It's really used for mobility. Since we don't run detonating arrow on the actual bar, we run an unspecialized decoy. I've deployed it there and you can see it's gonna distract the enemies. It's really nice when you have objective based maps or even difficult enemies that have just gotten onto you and you don't have shift off cooldown. We'll charge the beacon here so that you can see that it's capable of holding its own in terms of one position. I'm gonna to try to remain in the circle the entire time because this build is actually surprisingly tanky. Like many rogue builds, you're gonna have a number of survivability in terms of defensive properties, whether that be Silver Shroud, so forth. But we're gonna have high dodge rate. We actually get a surprising amount of armor after using shift from the shurikens. 
And that's the reason that we take that ability in this loadout as well. If you're looking for more information on that, you can look at the link in the video description, which will cover all the original skills and the original version in more depth. You can see this is going to be just about charged in a few more seconds, but essentially just shifting your way around, popping off the explosive traps when needed, and it takes out all those high health enemies really quickly. Overall, this is a really enjoyable build to play. Now, you could convert this to a melee build as well. However, for the video, I want to keep this as a ranged build. I really want to make sure that players who are interested in having ranged versions have this option. I've chosen to include an empowered monolith boss fight with Lagan as well. This is to assure you that the build does in fact have the ability to survive, despite not having thousands of ward like some of the other builds may have you believe. In addition, it really demonstrates how much burst damage this build can do, and you'll notice that Lagan's health occasionally gets chunked from the detonating arrows as they explode. I've removed the second phase to save you time, and in general it's pretty trivial with a ranged build like this. When fighting bosses in general, try to stutter step, that means to move slightly after every arrow or ability you fire. This helps reduce the damage you take and greatly increases your survivability. It's also easier to do on a controller, which is another point for those that enjoy playing with one. As you can see, although this build excels at AoE damage aimed at speed clearing monoliths, it's more than capable of taking down the bosses as well. This makes it an excellent choice if you're looking for an archer type build. It's also worth noting that even though we don't scale the damage from the stacking ailments, they do plenty of damage to enemies. Very useful for finishing off enemies that are chasing you while mapping, and the sheer damage they deal over a longer boss fight adds up as well. If you prefer another skill over Puncture, you could easily swap something like Flurry or Cinder Strike, and possibly even others in its place. So there's definitely some potential for variations, improvements, and even flexibility, making this a great choice if you like to follow build guides, but alter them slightly to put your own twist on them as well. As you can see, although this build excels at AoE damage aimed at speed clearing monoliths, it's more than capable of taking down the bosses as well. Whether this is your first video or you've seen hundreds on this channel, I'd like to thank you. Covering last ebook has been great, and I very much enjoy the engaging comments about the various builds. I'd like to remind everyone that I try to respond to as many comments as possible, and on this channel, you don't need to leave them on the specific video or topic that they're about. If you'd like to ask a question about, say, the Poison Warlock video that popped in your head while watching this video, feel free. I'll leave screenshots of the build and specialization trees for reference as well. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.